Welcome to our review on diffusion. First thing we need to know then is the definition for diffusion. And quite simply, diffusion is the net movement of particles from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So what we're actually seeing is that the particles are moving down a concentration gradient because they're going from high to low. Because of that, it's what's known as a passive process. So a passive process is one that's going to occur without needing any energy input. We find the fusion will happen in solutions and in gases, and it's going to continue until the concentration gradient is zero. So I've given you a little diagram on the right there just to show you what we mean. So at the beginning, we've got the little red particles, which are the burnt toast smell. And you can see how the blue particles, which is the rest of the air, are pretty evenly spaced. Now, what we see is as time goes on, the red particles diffuse through the air from the area of high concentration near the toaster to the area of low concentration, the other rooms, until they're actually nice and equally distributed. We did use this phrase net movement in our definition. So just remember, when we're talking about the net movement, that's the particles moving in minus the particles moving out. When we're considering diffusion in living things, then what we're really looking at is the small substance movement. Now, when we're thinking about our small substances, they're able to move in and out of cells across the cell membrane via this process of diffusion. And we've got a few key examples here. So the first one is oxygen and glucose, which are able to move into the cells. And we've got carbon dioxide, which will move out of the cells. Another example that we should be aware of is urea, which is one of those waste products made in your liver. So it moves from the liver cells into the blood plasma, and then it's going to diffuse from the blood plasma into the kidney, where it will then be excreted in your urine later. What we find is there are actually three factors that can affect the rate of diffusion, and you need to know how they do this in each case. So our three factors are surface area, the concentration gradient, and the temperature. If we think about surface area, first of all, then the pattern that we see here is that the greater the surface area, the faster the rate of diffusion. And the reason for that is that if we've got a larger surface area, then we've got more space for diffusion to occur over, which just means that in any given time, more particles are able to pass through that membrane. So this is why we see a few of these exchange surfaces with these adaptations to increase their surface area. So we've got the alveoli and the villi, and we're gonna look at those in a bit more detail in a future video. Our second factor is the concentration gradient. And the pattern that we see here is that the steeper the concentration gradient, so the greater the difference between the high and the low, then the faster the rate of diffusion. And the reason for that is because the net movement from one side to the other is greater. Our third and final factor is the temperature. So the pattern that we see here is that the higher the temperature, the faster the rate of diffusion. Now this is going into a little bit of your chemistry knowledge that hopefully you've picked up already, which is that as the temperature increases, particles gain kinetic energy. And if they've got more kinetic energy, they're moving faster, and therefore diffusion is going to happen faster. Hopefully at the end of this video, we can recall the definition for diffusion. We can give examples of where diffusion happens and also explain the three factors that can affect the rate of diffusion.